Okay. Am I on TV? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, how long do I have? How many minutes do I have? Uh, Thirty minutes. Thirty. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Um, nice to be here. Um, today I'm sharing um, a little side project that I have, which is built with electron. I call that space radar. Um, so, um, yeah, this is just a different title. Like the things that I've learned uh, building this app, and yeah. although it's called Space Radar, it has nothing to do with like the outer space or you know the the, the radar that you know uses radio wave. So, um, because I think there are already a lot of these applications out there. And uh, I think like kind of, I just started, you know, this radar is like one of the names which was not being used. But when, <laughs> but when I actually Googled that, right, there is actually something really called space radar, which is like satellite in space, like, I don't know, shooting radio waves. But anyway, yeah, because, you know, this is uh, electron, and I thought it's space and radar. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think Simon last year gave actually a space. Uh, simulation, so this is a different kind of space. Um, so I'm sure, um, I think two meetups ago, I think Chiyan actually gave a talk on Electron. Uh, I mean, um, it, it was titled like Getting Excited on Electron. Um, today, it might be um, getting a little disappointed with ele Electron. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah I, I wasn't around, but I actually caught you know, his video and I, so thanks, engineer.sg. Um, so how I started Electron was, I was actually at the Taiwan JS uh, uh, the JavaScript conference and they, you know, there was a workshop on Electron and I thought, okay, you know, we are, you know, um, let me just try it out. Um, this is a really cool, I think it's, it's a very comprehensive presentation if um, anybody who wants to learn more about Electron or, you know, a cr a building cross-platform desktop applications with Electron. Um, you can click on the link. So, um, so that was what I did. Like I was sitting there. And, okay, you know, uh, yeah, I heard about Electron. So let me start doing that. And and so there, you know, it turns out to be pretty simple. Uh, first, you need to have a main JS, and um, and then you require the stuff, you know, and. And you, you see that you add like event listeners uh, on when you know windows are closed, on when the app is ready, and you kind of open a new browser window. So the browser window is like basically a Chrome browser, and that is actually basically your application that you know that your electronic application. Um, the next thing is index.html. So uh, you're basically saying open the browser window and load up index.html. If you see over here, there's a file uh, directory name, index.html. So you're basically just, well, I got to type over there, but okay. Uh, it still works. Okay, so this is HTML, it, it works. Um, yeah, I, so I wrote, okay, a simple hello, hello world app. And, um, and you know, it's it, um, just HTML web technology. And uh, how, how, how do you run Electron? So one way is that if you have npm install, you have node install, you, you can just npm install dash, uh, g for global, and you can inst uh, that will install like Electron previews into, in, in, into your system. And you just have to run Electron dot, which basically means run the main dot js. In your in your directory, um, and yeah, and I, I said that you, you could create an electron app in less than four steps. So by the third step, you know you are already already running an electron app. Um, so if let's say do, do you want to let me do a demo? Um, okay, let me just. This is really high resolution. Okay, um, so yeah, this was my project, and actually I did commit the first. Oops. Sorry. 
the, the nervous when, and you can just run the actual one. Ta-da! Hello world! Alright. <laughs> okay. So let's let's go back. And this is if you know if you think wow. You know, it's so awesome. You know, I, I'm a JavaScript developer, and I can actually create an app. So this this packaging where you, um, this npm module which helps you with packaging. And if you run this command, it basically uh, generates a map application. Uh, that's the platform dummy, and you can actually uh, target it for Windows, and, and this good platform you could have it to. And it will generate like the binaries which you can zip it up, send it to a friend to run. So, yeah, that's all. Hello world, uh, in, in less than four steps. So, um, so, so I think um, what I've, is Electron is really fun. Um, as, so, I, I did actually try Node WebKit in the past, and basically, <coughs> using HTML and JavaScript, you could actually create um, have, you, you could have an app which you can package and you know, for somebody to download and run it. And as I continue to play a little, um, you, you feel comfortable because you, are, you, know, you can actually use whatever the, the, the way you write node code um, or you know, the, the way that you develop for the front end and you, you, know, and you use Chrome to view a web page. So basically, yeah, you know, as a JavaScript developer, you now have an avenue where you can actually write native apps. Um, so actually, now come to why I actually wrote this app is that, like, for example, I wanted to upgrade uh, to uh, so an app store update, and they say, oh, you do not have enough space. Um, yeah, and so this is what I usually get, like, because uh, you know, this is a MacBook Air, and you know, it's running like. Uh, you know, SSD and, and you know, it's very, really easy to fill out your space very fast. So, of course, you know, uh, the, thing to, you know the, the thing to do is like figure out what's taking up all my this space. And it turns out that there's, uh, you know, uh, one way you can do that is to run the du command. And it's kind of an interesting question. Like, you know, like, oh, okay, du is like uh, any decent. Uh, Developer who knows Linux command will know, but it turns out wow, there's actually so many answers in you know, different permutations where you can du and you can grab it, you can sort it, you know, and uh, and yeah, you know, just it's quite entertaining to like to, to, to read that track. But for me, I think it's like um, I want to know where my space go to, but every time I want to run a du command, I, you know. I, what, what was that switch? And then I will have to go and Google that, and then I'll go back to this, uh, to, to, to this uh, stack exchange thread. So uh, basically, this app is like scratching my itch, like you know, like um, to actually have an app to visualize my this space. And and, and and so when I, when I was you know playing around with electron, I said, oh, well, there's a really cool visualization library called D Tree. And if you go to, to, to this gallery, you can see, wow, there's you know, a lot of beautiful kind of charts. And one of them, you can, if you see over here, it's called the Sunburst Visualization. And, um, and over here, you can see the tree map visualization. And it turns out that these visualizations were actually uh, you know, useful for this, uh, for, for this space visualization. Although, I mean, D3 being a JavaScript library has been used to create lots of interactive visualization on the web. So, uh, so how, how do you use D3? Of course, you can download it. Uh, in, in this case, I npm install it. And, um, and one way to get started is that um, Mike Rostock, who's, who's, who's like one of the creator of D3, actually has this web page called Blocks, where he actually writes snippets on and examples where it, it becomes a way that you can actually learn uh, through the examples. So basically, I just went to his example of like sunburst visualization, and uh, you'll be able to see the code. And yeah, as I mentioned, that uh, sunburst was actually like this research project, and uh, it looks like 
from you know from really old computers. But um, anyway, uh, this 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 is like a summary of that that uh, they they ask users to use like Sunburst and PreMaps visualization. And in general, the participants prefer the Sunburst too, you know, which is like uh, which looks like you know flares coming out from the sun. Um, so. Um, did I miss something? Okay, so imagine that I, I, I actually uh, combine them together. And so, actually D3 is pretty awesome, I think. It can be another talk, like, uh, you know, how you can use that for transitions, how it handles data binding in, in a like, really cool way. So, the other library which I always use is 3.js, but this time it's D3. So both of them, you know, are really cool. Like. Um, so, uh, the next thing is that, uh, so I thought, okay, well, I have a graph component. Now I just need to get the data like, from my disk, like how much space is, you know, uh, what are my files taking, how much space. And, and, and I, I could actually write, um, you know, I, I was then, you know, I was taking a break in Taiwan. And I was probably on the train, and uh, I think I did not have internet, and I just kind of wrote, like, just 30 lines of code. And you could actually traverse your file system and calculate the total file size of this. Um, so this is my first take on like, you know, finding out where this space. Um, so basically, it says explore a directory, and you, you use L stack, which is uh, you find what is the data. Uh, I mean, the the file the file system information on that file, which could be a file or it could be a directory. So you have an if you know a stack is file or is directory, and if it's a directory, you you do a read. Uh, directory sync, and you can traverse that, and, and that becomes a you know a recursion. So um, in this case, like I just use sync because it's convenient, right? And yeah, and 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 there you go. You know, you could I could start to you know that is like a this visualization app uh, that in less than you know not a lot of code, you know, and, and you could actually write uh, this uh, visualization app. Um, yeah. So, of course, uh, years ago, I remember uh, in Windows, like, I don't know, Windows 95, there, there's this freeware app called Scanner 2. So I think that was when I had the inception that, you know, actually, wow, this is actually a really cool visualization tool. Um, um, yeah, so I think, you know, just using this, uh, you, you know, it's it's like you could create an app. So of course, uh, you know, as it, it turns out that if you want it to be an app, like you can put an app store. You, you need to do more work. You need to think of the, the interfaces, and and this is like I'm, um, you know, just throwing the tree map in. So you know, it's like it's not so you know, it's it's not happy ending yet. Um, so it turns out that this scanning can be tough. Uh, the next challenge that I met is. How do I scan my entire hard disk? When I, when I tried this prototype, like you know, wrote the code in, in a really short term, I scanned it with a couple of directories and it worked well. But the question is, how do I want to scan my entire drive? Right? Um, so I I tried a different ap approach. So you know, uh, first like just now you see the synchronous method. And then, there, and then I looked, hmm, you know, when, when I got, got, got back to the internet, I said, oh, there must be somebody who, who writes some node module out there. And, and sure, there's a, there's a node DU, right? And, um, and it turns out that, hey, there's somebody familiar that I know who has contributed to that project. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and, and so, but, uh, you know, that it's great to actually use node modules, but in, in this case, it does, does not fit all my needs because this returns me like the total results and not you know, the breakdown of uh, the individual di subdirectories. So, um, and, 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 then, and then I, I tried to use using <coughs> Q. So, um, to, to give a, a bit of... Okay, so, so, so let, let me backtrack a bit to, to say that uh, you know, the why why are, are we not using synchronous method? So I mean, as as if you're a Node user, you know that uh, synchronous will basically block JavaScript the, the JavaScript track until you know after the operation is completed. So when you run it in, even when you run it in um, Electron, right? 
um, that principle applies. Basically, when you're running a synchronous uh, job, you're basically your UI will be frozen. So uh, that is why you, you don't want to use uh, uh, like synchronous calls. And and so you know, so I so I thought, oh, you know, actually Node DU was using uh, this library called async, right? So I thought, okay, I will give async a try. And and one of the things that I, I did was to to wrap um, my uh, the the recursive uh, file di uh, you know scanning in, in into the in the async queue. So this is basically how you could you would use the async the, the queue will you know will, will call back a function when all the tasks are completed, and uh, you basically wrap your you know the, the the previous explore function, and you push and you push like the job that you want to be to, to be done next, and uh, and and so basically that. That can be done is asynchronously, and one of the things that uh, AsyncQ does is that you can have a limit on the number of like uh, parallel jobs. So I set it to ten to start, and then I set it to you know like different numbers just just to explore. And it turns out that um, you know it's it solved the problem of not locking my UI, but there was a problem like it felt like it was taking a really really long time to scan like my this. Right, uh, when I scan my my drive, it took forty minutes. You now I, I I decided okay, let me just let it run and see like how long it takes. Right. Um, and um, and and I decided after that, let me just throw away this library. I was just just this asynchronous call, and, and and so that was what I did. I I changed the code to just basically just use without any modules. Just uh. Uh, read, read directory, uh, else step, and and uh, yeah, it it gave me like a speed up of like ten x. So instead of forty minutes, it's four minutes, and and I compared that with the speed of du, and du was give, giving me around four minutes for my entire hard disk. So um, so it means that actually wow, you know, actually no, it's actually really fast, All right, and and. Only after that, then I thought about it. You know, it could just be, you know, the async queue implementation. And and I think uh, some people will recommend Bluebird if you want to, you know, you want it to be performant. But I've not uh, like dive into that. Um. So yes, I I. Uh, it turns out that this is a common problem. Um, that there's a threat on an electron, and I think um, I think at the start where people were complaining, hey, you know, uh, even the atom editor seems to be, you know, locked up when you are scanning files, and you know, like VS Code actually does a better job. So so you know, some comment commenters have said, oh, actually VS Code actually spin off and another process and run that in that process, and so. And so I go on uh, around my journey to to like figure out how I can best do to to do that. And so um, so this is um, surprisingly that you know this isn't really well documented. I think this chart was actually uh, done by someone else. But you see the orange. Um, it's called a browser process. Strangely, it's not the browser window. It basically means the, the electron, you know, the first place where, where you run launch electron, that's the browser process. And that's a parent. And that basically runs main.js. And when you create a new browser window, you call that the renderer process. Right? And the renderer process basically loads HTML, loads JavaScript. And those JavaScript you know, has no integration. So this is basically how electron works. And, um, and 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 this is um, and actually electron it, when when you start to do you know beyond that hello world right you, you may you may need to communicate you can actually create new browser windows and you can actually <coughs> communicate among them uh, but the how 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 it gets communicated is that uh, the render process and the browser process can do IPC calls. So you could actually send messages to the render process, and the render process can send messages back to the browser process. But when you want to send a render uh, process to another render process, then you might have to you know to, to do some code to to uh, to hop around. But um, and, and so if you look at the API, there's this thing called remote. So remote basically encapsulates some of 
those IPC calls so that you're basically saying that um, instead of you sending a message down and, and handling the code in main JS, you, you can actually, from your browser, process it remote, which is basically main.js, and you can receive a message and pass it to another render process. Um, I hope it's not confusing, uh, but you could actually read that on, on this. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, so what I did was basically that, um, similar to that, I, I basically say, okay, let me try um, running the DU operation, which is uh, scanning all, all of these, the I/O intensive operation in by spinning off a different process, and that would uh, that would run, and you know it could be like four minutes long, it could be ten minutes long. And so one of the things that I use IPC is that you know, while it's scanning, I'm going to send like, my progress updates you know, through IPC calls back to the first uh, renderer process. That, you know, so your UI can actually say, oh, you know, it's still scanning. You, know. you could actually preview stuff without waiting for the entire job to, 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 to complete. So a first one easy way that I did not have to, to do that is just to say, okay, just please wait. You know. But uh, yeah. I just kind of bent down this path of, you know, thinking that well, you know, while it's doing something, you know, let me preview something in 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 the in the main render process, and so what I did, um, so what happens is that I generate a JSON which basically represents your file structure, your your directory structure. So basically, file size, file size, and if it's a directory, then it'll be directory with children and and so on. And um, and the next roadblock that I, that I found is that oops, you know that JSON is getting larger and larger, and uh, soon when I'm trying to pass the object through IPC, it's basically saying your message is too large, like you know like don't do that, or, um, or that 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 doesn't work. So I um, I tried like really different, many different. So back view is basically a way to to have a different electron process, but that's like running in an iframe in your current browser. A fault node process means that you can actually fault an electron process, but you know, treat it as like a node process. And the way which, which I ended up doing was to fault it and you know, make the electron window invisible. And what, how, how I transfer the data, you know, I, when I discovered that uh, I could use local storage since you know, they are both Chromium. And, and lo local storage has this property where when you update a key, all other browsers on the same domain would be able to get a changed event. And I, you know, I, I use that hack in some other places too, and, and, and I reuse that, and it turns out to, to work pretty well. But local storage also have a limitation, which, you know, size limitation. Um, this, 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 this was a... <laughs> Uh, a, a, a little uh, IPC uh, using UDS uh, project that, that I try out. It, it turns out you can send like 100,000 messages a second. But uh, so, so I tried all of them and uh, yeah, and yeah, and, and okay, and, yeah, a, a, a lot more stuff. And, and I think yeah, the final decision was that I would use local storage when something is, be, is less than 10 megabytes. And when it's above 10 megabytes, when it hits the storage limit, since the, the nice thing about, about Electron is that it's, it has like no permissions and you can write you know, a message to the file system. And then I will use a local storage to send a message over asking the other render process to read it. And, and it turns out that it's, it's really efficient. Right, um, I did a lot of like, tests with that. And, Ta-da! You know, I could like scan 170 gigs of my space, and yeah, and so this was like my first um, oh, one of my first release. Like, yeah, so so basically, you can see that you know the, the things is scanning. Um, I think there was yeah there was a bit of latency. I don't remember why. Yeah, but when when you are when you are JSON passing a big JSON file, you know, it's it's yeah. But, but more or less, it's, it was very reactive and fast, like that 10x, and almost fast or faster than DU. All right. 
So, um, so some other things that I learned that JavaScript objects are expensive. So um, one of the things that you have to take note is that um, Electron process has to be, you know, have to be kept under 1.5 gig of memory, otherwise it will crash. So uh, I think that's default in, I'm, I'm not sure what defaults are there, but yeah, I think if node, uh, that could be node default, right? And uh, objects itself has a memory cost. So when, when I'm serializing and passing over my whole, uh, the whole representation of my disk, it was 150 max in JSON, but when users have to JSON pass that in any node process, and you'll find that, well, it's like 400 meg in your heap memory, or you know, like almost like 800 meg in your RSS. So when I'm doing that, I have to make sure that I have to be careful. Like, I have my charts is displaying data, I have to deallocate them, you know, make sure that it gets garbage collection, and then render the new graph. All right, um, that, um, yeah, that 120 meg of JSON has actually two million objects. So, so, well, so, so actually, you know, you, there's actually so many objects in your file system, and uh, oh, just like, and and if you try inserting two million keys in a JavaScript object, right, you'll start to face a challenge. And I mean, if you're doing no at scale, right, then you, you would, you know, you, you face this problem. Like one, one of the library which my colleague has written is a Judy FFI, a Judy, Judy uh, what do you call it? Uh, structures, data structures is, is an efficient way of like um, um, storing hash, max, yeah, max of uh, data. And, and, you know, two million keys, I think we, 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 we tested that and it was like, it doesn't use any heap much cheap memory, um, and you know it's all um, it's it's not within V8 heap, but you know it's actually using uh, nodes heap, which is you know which is almost like uh, like the, the way you do things in C, right? Um, so other approaches which which I tried was like using flat buffers, which is this actually serialization, you know the the, the, in the one of the hotter topics like flat buffers, Captain Proto, simple binary encoding. These are serialization methods which they claim to be really fast because of zero copy. Like in C, you can actually read it direct, read from the memory directly without having to deserialize that. So I thought, mm, you know, could I try that for JavaScript? And it turns out that uh, Captain Proto, uh, there's a couple of JavaScript implementations of that, but it, it didn't turn out to be uh, really usable for me, or you know, it was a bit complicated. I, and it turns out flat buffers uh, has a JavaScript implementation which was um, just yeah, which was much although there's no documentation. But you should try that; it's it's really cool. So so when I use flat buffers, it takes up like just hundred meg of heap memory, right? And I think I'll get to that in the next slide. Um, yeah. So yeah, I say why why I say JavaScript objects are fast because when I use flat buffers. Although it's zero seconds deserialization, but for me to actually read, to, you know, to read that data structure, right, there's certain cost involved that takes me five seconds. While the JavaScript object, maybe it takes one second to, to, to JSON pass it, but you know, it's like almost less than one second to actually traverse the entire you node. Know. So, um, okay, so come to another point, which is Electron apps, um, yeah. Surprisingly, uh, there, you know, I, I, there, there are certain things that you have to take note doing cross-platform. Like, I think there's no magic bullet, but um, it turns out that when I tried to run that on Windows, right, uh, which I have not boot up for a long time, but I have, a, I have a PC at home, and when I decide to try that, it actually works. You know, so, so well, you know, uh, it's kind of like pretty impressive. Um, so the next thing which, you know, um, um, the, so after I released the first version, the, okay, the, there were requests that, you know, oh, they want a tree map too. And, and one thing that, that is challenging is that uh, D3 uses SVG and that is, SVG by, by itself were, 
it's not the problem, but when you're renting thousands of objects in, in the DOM, and the browser will, will have a reflow, and that will make it really, really slow. So um, I end up having to implement it in Canvas and emulating the DOM. And, um, yeah. and, and so, so, so someone, uh, actually, you know, some, some people mentioned after I did that, oh, wow, it, it looks like this, this app called Daisy Dis, and it turns out to be a 990 app. And I tried it. it was, it's really cool. Like, I mean, they, it's, it's like a company doing that. And, uh, but I mean, for, for, for anybody to, I mean, it, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a compliment in a way that you know, well, you know, this is something that I, I did in, in just a few days could, you know, could, could, could actually be, be, be uh, you know, pretty powerful. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll skip all of this. So I think, uh, well, you know, th th this is a really nice book called Generative Design. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I think these are more challenges. Like you know, this this are open source project. So if anybody is interested, uh, in, in my free time, I will work on that. So one one of the things that I learned that is visualization is useful. Like this is one of the latest edition of my app. And I think it'd be more fun to actually give a live demo if like, we have any more time. Okay. All right. And uh, let me scan. Let's say my. Um, Dropbox. Yeah. And yeah, it's actually done already. It's, it's really fast. And you can actually like go into the directory and say, oh, what is this framework? Mm. Okay, taking out. And I have like, lots of uh, PDF which I downloaded. So, and you can actually like go up this directory. And uh, so one, one, was, one of the stuff with Electron is that the integration of shell, which is like when you right click, and, and, you, see, and you see this uh, pop-up window that's native. And here's like things that like you can actually uh, locate directly in the file system. You can right click on it and delete. <laughs> At least I'm not going to delete now. And, uh, and, and one of the realization when I was doing this is that, you know, I could actually apply this not only to, to this space, but to memory. So this is my memory. And I can see that my app memory was taking out most of that. It's Google Chrome. And I should try with my colleagues. It's like everybody's memory usage is like being owned by Google Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and there's a tree map representation of that. Yeah. Okay. So that's a very quick demo. So, so I think uh, the point is that you know, people say, oh, this has been done before. But I think by me doing this, I, I learned a lot of lessons that I could apply that to you know, to, to the memory, which I don't see any apps out there doing that. And, you know, like, and I don't think there's any apps which you can download right now which have three maps and, 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 and a sunburst visualization. <laughs> right. So it's nice to have your own app. So these are friends who actually sent me a screenshot. Oh, wow, it's, it's, it's you know, on the dashboard. Oh, I have I, Yeah, that, that icon was designed by one of my colleagues. Right? So, so I end, I end with a quote. Like, uh, Mike Bostock, who is, again, one of the, the, the main guys behind D3GS, he says, uh, visualization leverages the human visual system to augment human intellect. Um, and I think that's actually a, ref a, I think a, a rephrase of, or, you know, based on a quote by uh, and, 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 and Gilbert, uh, sorry, I can't, I can't remember the name, but one of the forefathers of, like, of like you know, the, the, the internet. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, there's a link to that if you're interested to take a look at that. So, yeah, so, so I, I found that actually when I, when I use this app, I could actually find a lot of stuff which is taking out my space. Like, if you're using Google Chrome Canary, you will find that it downloads every version of every time it updates, and that takes out a lot of space. If you have Xcode, it, does, it downloads every new OS update, and over time it takes out like really a lot of space. So, and, and that could actually be nicely swatted with visualization. So um, that's me, I'm Joshua, if nobody knows me. Um, yeah. um, I work for a Czech company called Zopim. Right. And um, yeah, and I, I found this, so, so this is a little bonus. I found that you, if you rename your GitHub reposit repository, they will create links. So click on any of the links, it will go to my GitHub repository. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, don't want me again about load this space. Thank you.
the question. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is um, But uh, real path, did you take that into account? Because I remember I was, I was traversing some stuff a while back and it was taking forever, but it turned out that it was just going like, um, it was following symlinks. Um, yes. Uh, well, yes. Not, um, symlinks and hard links. Um, no, uh, only symlinks, sorry. Uh, and that's what made it slow. Uh, did you resolve your, your, your real path? Yeah, uh, that, that was basically your contribution to that, to the node DU. So basically, there's a the stat and there's L stat. So L stat does, will, will treat, uh, will be able to, if it's a symbolic link, it is, it is not a directory, it's a file. So you do not, because you, you do not traverse into that. So, yeah, so Did this. Did you say that was my contribution to node DU? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yes. Great. Um, let's take a short break. Yeah, take a short break. Yeah, just a short break. So I'll speak in my name.